Hi class, this is the last one of my little short videos <clears throat> where I'm solving the chapter 8 practice problems. So this is chapter 8 practice. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> a company can make X hundred shirts for a cost of C dollars. The equation is C equals 200 plus 500X minus 100X squared. How many shirts can they make for $800? Okay, let's make sure we got everything straight here on the interpretation of things. So X equals the number of shirts. But it's in hundreds. So if we solve an X equals 6, that really means 600 shirts. And then C equals the cost, and that would be in dollars. Okay, now we've got a formula. We've got this formula, C equals 200 plus 500X minus 100X squared. And our job is to find X. Now, we don't quite have an equation ready to go, but we have another clue. Uh, the number of shirts that we're trying to find is going to be costing $800. Oh, so we can plug the cost in and then we'll have an equation that we can work with. So I'm going to take the cost out, plug in $800. And now I have an e equation with one variable, only X's, and I want to get X by itself. Now when we solve second power equations, we typically, not typically, second power equations, it has to equal zero before we can start. Okay, so I'm gonna minus the 800 to make it equal zero. Now 800 and the 200 are my only like terms, so I'm gonna just zero out. 200 minus 800 is minus 600 plus 500X minus 100 x squared. And I want to solve this thing. I'm going to need some more room. I'm going to erase that thing. We're supposed to find x. Okay, how do we solve quadratic equations? Well, the only way we can is by factoring. Now, I'm going to put down a reminder list here. All right, so this is our strategy for factoring. Now, that's how we solve equations. That's our one method right now in chapter 8 is we factor. Now, the first thing to look for is anything that is common. Now, I see something common in all three of those numbers. 100 will divide into all three numbers. Now, I also am noticing that the, the second power one is negative. My leader is negative. That makes factoring harder. So what I'm going to do is kind of take care of two birds with one stone here. I'm going to factor out negative 100 and divide negative 100 from all three terms. So negative 600 divide out 100 is 6. 500x divide out negative 100 is minus 5x. And negative 100 divide out negative 100 is 1x squared, and it's positive. Now, the reason we like that, I'm going to put it in order is so that the leader is positive. The x squared is positive, which is going to make it much easier to factor. Now, we still haven't broken down the second power. So if you notice on the factoring strategy, can you do more steps? You Factoring is many times not just one step. I did factor something important. I factored out the GCF. That was forward progress. But I have to keep factoring if I can. And so the second thing you look at is how many terms there are. Now, the 100, that's done. Negative 100 is factored. But the x squared minus 5x plus 6 is three terms. So I have to use this strategy for three-term factoring. It could be the reverse FOIL with guess and check. Or it could be a formula. Now, 90% of the time, it's the reverse FOIL with guess and check. So let's do that. Let's factor this guy. So we're going to have 
0 equals negative 100 times, and I'm going to break down the reverse foil, x squared is easy, x times x. I need two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. Now normally our list is 1 times 6, 2 times 3, and depending on the signs it could be either 1, because 1 and 6 could make 5, and 2 and 3 can make 5, it depends on the signs. But we're multiplying to positive 6, so we're going to have to have a plus plus and a minus minus, and the only way to get that to work is a minus, minus 2, minus 3. Okay, so um, let's solve. Now if you want, you can divide by 100. If you divide by 100 on both sides, it'll cancel, and 0 on the left side, 0 divided by 100 is 0. But you don't have to do that, just as long as you realize the only things that can solve this are the x's. So I'm going to make two equations out of these. x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. And then I'm not going to show the work just to save some time here. Add 2 to both sides, we get x equals 2. And on the other one, add 3 to both sides, we get x equals 3. And typically with quadratic equations, we're looking for two possible solutions, and we got two. Now, let's stop. What does it mean? It means if x equals 2, it means making 200 shirts costs $800. It also means that when x equals 3, oops, I, I didn't write the first one right. When x equals 2, Remember, x is in hundreds, so that's 200 shirts. When x equals 3, that means we're going to make 300 shirts. And that costs $800 also. That's what we've solved. Now, if you're in a business, what should we choose? Well, they're both legitimate answers. And if you can get 300 shirts for $800, or 200 shirts for $800, of course you want to pick the most shirts for your money. Now wait, does that really make sense? Um, it is possible because there's this thing in economics where uh, we haven't studied graphs in chapter 8, but in chapter 9 we did. The costs, if you make zero shirts, you pay zero dollars, and the more shirts you make, the cost goes up. But then there's a point of efficiency, where you've made so many shirts, the factory is working better and better and better. So the, the more shirts you ask for, the cost starts going down. And so if we're going to pay $800, it would happen twice. And one time was three, the other time was two. And we're going to take the 300 shirts for our $800, because that's the best price. Okay, anyways, I hope that made sense out of that. Study hard, you guys. I'll see you in class.